Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Mo, and welcome to what would normally be a vlog, but we're going to suck the vlog up in all of its ramblings and unrelated topics to talk about one topic that has spurred on a larger discussion that I'm very much looking forward to having with you guys right now, and that is the rumor that Battlefield 5 could be set in World War 1, also that it could potentially be releasing in October. Now, none of this has been confirmed or denied as I'm currently recording this by DICE or EA. So take it all with a very, very tiny grain of salt. We really don't know if this is true at all, but I actually would love to see this happen. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And a lot of it ties to my personal passion for, for history, specifically World War I and World War II history. So rather than have a discussion where we sit here and speculate endlessly about, oh, dude, how could they actually do World War I, man? Like, what would we have? Like, no, 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 we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk more about the history of World War I and just in general why I think this would be an actual really good setting. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to mention Verdun. Yes, Verdun is awesome. If you have a PC, go play it. But that doesn't mean that there's not room for another game, specifically a huge franchise like Battlefield, to set itself in World War I. Now let's get some things out of the way. Admittedly, there's a lot of you out there who are probably young, who don't know much about our country's history or the history of whatever country you live in because it was a world war and almost all of the countries partook in it. And that's okay, I understand it hasn't been fed to you. And honestly, I mean, unless you have a personal interest in it, how would you know about it otherwise? They don't really teach this kind of stuff in schools, at least not the same way they did, I imagine, when I was in school. So let's get it out of the way that World War I was not fought with muskets and swords. That was the Civil War. In fact, World War I was one of the most technologically advanced wars that we ever saw. And what I mean by that is that we saw an extremely large amount of technological breakthroughs and advancements during World War I. Because the two sides of the war were very much an even match, so they were constantly looking to gain an edge on one another, and that meant the development of new weaponry. Now, of course, we had the standard set of bolt-action rifles. This is actually what World War I was fought with. Bolt-action rifles and artillery were at the core of the experience. The Lee Enfield from the British, which was a 303 cartridge rifle, which is still being used today by people. Like, people still hunt with an actual Lee Enfield, you know, the, the same rifle that would have been boxed up and sent out to a soldier during World War I. Um, and it was also... A weapon that had been used in many varieties since 1902 by the British Army. Yes, it's crazy. Um, it was it was a really really reliable bolt action rifle that had a 10 round magazine, making it really damn effective. The Germans also had the Gerwar 98, which was another bolt action rifle. So bolt action rifles a big part of World War One, no doubt. But outside of that, we also had a lot of machine guns. There was the Maxim gun from the Americans the uh, British Vickers machine gun, as well as the Machine Goa 08 from the Germans, which was actually derived from the Maxim gun. All of these guns could fire anywhere from 400 to 500 rounds a minute. This was serious firepower. World War I was no joke, and that's just a small list of it. Honestly, if you really want to do a deep dive, do some searching, there is a ridiculous amount of weapons and technology that were developed during World War I. As I mentioned, a lot of artillery. We also saw the initial development of poison gas, chlorine gas, as well as uh, phosgene and mustard gas by the Germans, which the Germans and the British, I should say, which was, uh, let's just say, no bueno. Um, it was something that broke a lot of rules. The Germans admittedly did it first, and then the British went on to do it anyways. So a poisonous gas was a huge, huge part of World War One, a terrifying part of World War One. In fact, they actually used artillery to deliver it. Yeah, like, super, super scary. Um, we also saw a lot of aircraft, tanks, airships, U-boats, Q-ships. Like, the list just goes on and on for the amount of ridiculous technology that was developed and then used on a regular basis during World War I. It's, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Like, it, it, just, it wasn't just muskets. Like, seriously, if you're at all interested in this kind of thing or if this discussion has just spurred on your interest as a youth who didn't really know about this, do some research, man, and you will find yourself delighted to see the amount of really crazy stuff that was developed during World War One for the sake of trying to win the freaking war. So there's no doubt that they'll be they'll be perfectly fine in terms of weapons and equipments and how we'll go about playing the game. Um, I think the big thing for me will just be a push for authenticity in terms of where we go in the game, the level design, the maps, because that is important. 
It's that atmosphere that made the original Call of Duty, that made Brothers in Arms and Medal of Honor so special to a lot of us. And I hope they continue that. But let's talk outside of the game itself, and let's talk about what Battlefield 5 could do if it did set itself in World War I. I mean, Battlefield franchise is a huge franchise. It's been played by multiple generations at this point. And I know a lot of people like to get caught up in the whole, I've been playing since Battlefield 2 days. Guess what? How about you look at it this way? It's actually really special that so many generations are able to share the enjoyment of one franchise. Yeah, let's take a positive approach. How about that, right? Instead of just shoving the negative everywhere we go. That's pretty special, right? There's no doubt about that. So when we start to look at the idea of essentially first-person shooters starting to come full circle, I know a lot of people have said this. I've already heard and seen people's comments. Oh, they think they can just go back to the beginning and then sell us it and we'll totally be on board for it. Well, there's no doubt that that's kind of their process. Like, we've done modern, we did some sci-fi stuff that didn't work out so well for Battlefield anyways. Let's go back around and go even further back in history. Let's go to World War I. There's no doubt that's part of their process, but you have to remember, there's multiple generations at this point that didn't grow up playing the World War II Battlefields, the World War II Call of Duties and Medal of Honors like we did. They don't even know, what they didn't play those games. They have no idea what those games were about. Maybe they played them because they're somebody who likes diving back into the history of games, but most of them haven't played them. They have a brand new set of generations to appeal to. Now look at, let's look at the, the really big positive side of building a game that has some sense of historical authenticity. You have the opportunity to introduce a generation to a part of history that they may have otherwise not had any care in the world about. Like I said, for me, it wasn't just my grandmother and, and, you know, her penchant for history. It was also the video games that I was playing at that time. Games were a huge part of my life at that age. You know, Call of Duty, Brothers in Arms specifically for me were games that got me interested, got me involved in learning about World War II. They helped me want to know more about history, the history of these wars. That's pretty special, right, when a game can do that. I mean, you look at Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero introduced multiple generations, again, to an era of music that they probably just always thought was the crap their parents played on the radio. Like, video games have the power to do some cool stuff every now and then. And if Battlefield 5 can come out and actually introduce an entire generation to, to history and give them an interest and get them involved with learning about history, that's really freaking special. That's actually really special. I'm somebody who definitely believes that we should all have at least some level of knowledge regarding our country's history, wherever you live in the world. You know, in my case, it's the United States of America. Um, and we've always had an involvement in all of the world wars. And it's important to learn about these things to some degree. I'm not saying you have to know every battle and have to be a historical, you know, dictation. The guy who shows up on the History Channel and tells you about the development of the 1911 pistol. No, 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 you don't have to go that far. But I do feel that it's important to understand, you know, why these wars were fought, where they were fought, who was involved, the technology that was being developed at that time. You know, it's just something that should be shared and, and, you know, pushed for from generation to generation. I know in our schools these days, history is becoming less and less important. Um, and honestly, someone who dates a teacher, <laughs> um, it's not being replaced with anything better. So I feel that there needs to be other influences to get the younger generations involved in history in, in, in gain, gaining the knowledge and becoming, uh, you know, just more versed in it. And if Battlefield can be that game, then that will make Battlefield 5, if it's a good game, of course, as well, it has to be a great experience. It has to push the Battlefield franchise forward in terms of just making it better than it was. Then that could potentially make it one of the most important entries in the franchise since 1942 since you know a lot of the older entries since battlefield 2 for a lot of people so something i'm very keen on uh, now like i just said it, it's all about them just making the best possible experience i don't actually mind if they did another modern entry it, but it needs to it needs to be like it's moving forward it needs to improve on the battlefield franchise but i very much and more so like the idea of them going world war one that just sounds really freaking awesome to me. It, it genuinely, genuinely does. And I know Verdun, 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 Verdun. But like I said, there, there, there's more than enough room for <laughs> for multiple World War One themed first person shooters. And I would love to see DICE and EA, you know, take their big fat budget and 
and make something special with this. I really genuinely would, for all of the reasons that I mentioned in this video. Now, what I'd really love to hear from you guys, especially, you know, fortunate enough to have a, a pretty decent generation gap that watches the channel here, you know, for those of you who grew up with those World War II, um, you know, games, Brothers in Arms and Call of Duty Medal of Honor, you know, did those games influence you? How did they influence you if they did? You know, did they help you develop an interest in, in, in the history of these wars? And if you're someone who, you know, was younger, who didn't really get to experience the, these games, you know, is, is playing a game based in these settings enough to, to give you that drive to learn more about those settings? Is that something that games do for you? I'd really like to hear everybody's thoughts on this. Throw them down in the comment section below. Let's get a big heartfelt history discussion going. And then I hope you guys have a great weekend. Play some awesome games. Maybe uh, stumble a little bit onto the internet and learn a little bit more about World War One history. And I will see you in the next one.